My name is Bryce, and I'm your host for The Inbound Secret, where we're talking with top performers and health experts and sales badasses alike about their strategies to optimize their well-being and performance. Once again, this is The Inbound Secret, and, and let's get rocking and rolling. This is The Inbound. This is, this is, this is The Inbound. This is The Inbound. This is The Inbound Secret. Welcome to another episode of The Inbound Secret, and today I have a very special guest for you guys. We've got James Smiley here, the one and only. To give you a little insight, if you don't recognize his name, after doing $210 million in sales, $350 million for a SaaS IPO, and I can't even count how many seven-figure and eight-figure funnels that you've been a part of, he's not only featured in ClickFunnels' webinar itself, but also in their guides, their help me. He's been called out by Russell. You're, you're doing big stuff over there, man. And I keep seeing your name up. So thank you very much for being on my show today. And I know everybody's excited to hear from you. So without further ado, say hello. What's up, everybody? What's going on? Uh, appreciate you having me. And uh, thanks for all that. It's been, um, it's, it's always interesting, like when you, when you, um, when you read like a summary of things you've done, right? Like, um, but, but to be honest, like every day, it's just, it's a normal day. I'm just, I just feel like I'm a normal dude, you know, I'm just out there working hard every day. So. I love it. And I think that's important because for a long time and, and tell me if you've experienced this, but I did, I've, I've had to start over from subterranean several times. And before I really started, the entrepreneurial journey, like really living for my purpose rather than just kind of doing the 40, 40, 40, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there was always this, there was always this like invisible bottleneck that I had created ment mentally for myself where it was, well, people doing that, they're, they're not, they're not the same as me. Like they're not normal people. I can't, I can't go associate with these people, but once you start getting into it, I mean, you, Russell, Grant, everybody I've met, people doing things that I aspire to do and get to that level and at some point I will, they're just regular people. Yeah, you're right. I mean, um, like having been on stages, like I spoke at CTIA, CES, I spoke at AT&T Stadium with Robert Hershevac. Um, like when you, like you tend to, um, to to think like you're some superhero or whatever but in all actuality um I, I think this is how i was raised you know my dad just raised me like he used to say like uh, like i made my first six figures when i was 20 we grew up really poor so it was like an epic epic feat um i i dropped out of four colleges and <laughs> um you know my dad's like a true blue collar guy so it's like you know he's not into technology or anything like that and um and so to, to, to make six figures at 20 when he was making $30,000 a year. Um, but, but he, he, he would say to me like, Hey, like, like the day when you don't, when you wake up and like someone's putting on your pants for you, like, or pouring your milk, like, um, like a Butler or something he's like, yeah. then you probably like made it. But until then, just, just get up and work hard. Like you're not, you're not anything yeah. special you know and, uh, <laughs> i don't know i just uh, i still put on my pants by myself uh i poured my own milk or whatever this morning so um you know i just just go out there and work hard every day you know and try to add value try to try to um <clears throat> i think the more like what when i was younger <clears throat> just to be totally real like when when you make money young and you don't you're you're not from money <clears throat> no one teaches you about it like um for me like I, I was, I got like super arrogant, like right away, you know? And, <laughs> um, and so I, I remember like treating people wrong. I remember treating employees wrong. I remember um, treating waitresses wrong, you know, just everything. And I remember like, I was living in LA for a long time, like, you know, going to like Ritz Carlton and all these like nice places, and then like just, just treating people wrong, you know? And uh, I remember one day realizing like, why am I, why am I being a jerk to people? like I, I i'm no different than they are right like yeah 
Um, and so, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been an interesting journey. Um, but I think like, uh, as you make more, you start to realize, like, hopefully you start to realize like this money is not making you any happier than you were before. <laughs> if anything, mm-hmm. sometimes it causes more problems. There's bigger problems. The problems are magnified on an epic level. Um, and so you, it's best, I think, to just be, try to be more every day about helping people and thinking about how can I help and serve people, you know, and, um, and, and hopefully, <clears throat> um, you know, that's the thing that when I interact with people, talk with people, um, you know, that's what, what, um, what I try, what I hope that comes across is that no matter what, like, I'm, I'm here to try to help you, you know. Yeah. And that, that's one of the things that, that really made, made me want to reach out and have you on the show was my, I don't know how much you know about what we do here at Funnel Driven and Chimera, uh, but our mantra is you are made to thrive, not just survive and consistency conquers complacency. And that really stemmed from like, I've got an upcoming book that talks about it, but I, I was a prolific mistake maker. I've made every mistake that somebody could possibly make. And I'm only 28. Like, I mean, legal problems, drug problems, money problems, personal problems, family problems, friend problems. Like I, I just threw myself in the blender for some reason for like the majority of my life. And I learned a ton of good lessons through that. And it really did break me down to the point where like, you know how you have to break a stallion before you can ride one, right? It really brought me down to that point because it was, well, I, I had to start over so many times and I learned a lot of lessons, but I did it the hard way. So my big thing is impact over income. Like that's, that's the biggest thing. And when I saw that we aligned on that, following you a little bit, we've talked a little bit in the past online and in group, I was like, yeah, he, he needs to be on the show. We need to spread this word. We need to make sure that, that, that impact grows. But I, I think you're absolutely right in like, once you, once you get to a certain stage and it's interesting because I think Brown did a study on it, if, if I'm not mistaken, where the, like the level of happiness to income does have a ceiling and it's somewhere around like 78,000 a year or something. I heard and, that. and right after that, it's like, it does, it takes until you hit like 30 million or something for that feeling to come back. Yeah. And it's one of those things that like we're for lack of a better term bred to believe that money solves all problems. And while yes, money will solve most of your problems it won't make you a better person. It's not going to make you happier. It, if you're unhappy and you're a bad person, it's just going to amplify that. It's one of those things that like, if you suck with 20 bucks, you're going to suck with 20 million. So, <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I mean, so, you know, um, um, I, 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 I think like, you know, once people start earning about, I would say somewhere in the twenty thousand dollar a month range. There, there, there isn't much that you. I remember thinking this when I was like 23, 24, 25. Is like, there isn't much that you couldn't buy. Yeah. Like if you want a Lamborghini, it's like two thousand dollars a month. You can just go lease a Lamborghini. Like, and if you're making twenty grand, you should be able to afford a Lamborghini. I mean, easy. So you don't need. You yeah. don't need to be a millionaire. Like you know, and um, and so it's it's like, it's like. I, you know, I, I'm all for ambition and all those kind of things and being great, setting new records, innovation, progress, progressing, all those things. But it's like, um, it's like, I think sometimes progress and innovation is like understanding who, who you are more and, um, and what you want more, you know? Um, so like um, <clears throat> one of my really good friends, uh, um, I, I talked to quite a bit. Um, this, so, this is, you know, Steve Larson, if you guys know mm-hmm. him. Um, so like, um, I was friends with him when he was working at ClickFunnels um, and then was really good friends in that whole transition process of him leaving. Mm-hmm. And, and now I see like what he's done and we're just having conversations now, like a couple, maybe like two years later on Boxer and things. And it's like, it's like, you know, it's like there, there's ways to make the same amount of income working less 
and even grossing less, right? Like your margin <laughs> goes up, you work on better type of deals. Um, and uh, so it's, it's really about what people want, right? Like, like if somebody um, wants to build a big tech company, well, they're probably gonna have to work 80 to 100 hours a week for 20 years, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. Like if that's what they want, that's what they want. Um, I, I think like with solopreneurism becoming bigger now, like with the advance of technology and cloud and all these things, like, like even what we're using right now, like Zoom and Dropbox and all these click funnels, like these things weren't available five, six, seven years ago, at least not to the, at this price and to the availability they are now in high speed internet on the phones and all that stuff. It's just like, this stuff is available now. And so <clears throat> um, what has happened there is like, I think initially there was this influx in solopreneurism around, I need to become a multimillionaire. Like I haven't made it if I'm not a multimillionaire. Well, a lot of these people, they're, they've made like 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars a year or a hundred thousand dollars a year. And they don't even, they, they really don't know like what they're, what they're dreaming about. And there's nothing wrong with dreaming about it, but it's just like, I think as, as they progress down the line, <clears throat> now that we're a few years into this, they're starting to go, wait a minute. Like, I'm not sure I want to make more than 200 or 400 or, or hundred mm -hmm. or, or 80 or whatever. Right. Right. Like, um, <clears throat> and I just want people to know, like, like it is okay to, to do that in terms of income and spend, maybe you want to be more about family. Maybe you want yeah. to be more about doing something with your community or church or religious or nonprofit or building homes or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I was just talking to a guy yesterday where he's really, really struggling in his business. He was super open with me and, um, and he wants to join one of our programs and, and and he just kept talking to me about how passionate he was about building homes, um, like like low income housing for homeless yeah. people and things like this. But then he wanted to build these like funnels and all the stuff. And I finally stopped him and I said, bro, it sounds like you need to go build homes. Like this is your deal. Like you love this. You would, you're almost crying talking about it. There's a massive need around the world. Um, why don't we work on taking that, that idea? You know, the suppliers, you know, people who build this stuff why don't we work with, um, you know, getting builders, general contractors on board and saying, Hey, for every 20 homes you build fund one of these little, you know, $3,000 homes, you know, or something yeah. like that. Right. Like, why don't we work on programs like that where, um, you know, that's your company. And, um, and he, he didn't care about making, becoming a millionaire anymore. He was yeah. 50 years old now. He didn't care about that, you know, like, um, and he's made money in the past. And so, <clears throat> um, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of, of, uh, of uh, freedom, I think, and, and just a release of this weight that, you know, people don't have to, to do all that to feel like they've accomplished something. Yeah. Um, and on the flip side of it, if you're super ambitious, and that's what you want, man, it's there for you. It's there for you more than ever before, you know, the ability to make $10 million or $80 million or $200 million um is there for you and it's there for you more than ever before with things like e-com and software and all these things i mean you know there, there's people building software now for three thousand dollars that eight nine years ago that would cost you a hundred grand yeah you know? i mean it's insane like what's, what's happening right now and i love that you brought that up because chimera developments is my software company and the software that we're doing now, I mean, the most expensive hourly dev rates, 250 bucks now for our, for Silicon Valley graded yeah. programmers. Mm -hmm. And 10 years ago, it would have been, I, right, we need $3 million for this base project. And now we can do stuff for 30 grand, 50 grand, hundred grand for the same quality work, if not better, mm -hmm. because technology's gotten there. Yeah, and, and there's, there's guys making what what would have been a hundred thousand dollar software project. They're building that in a three thousand dollar Chrome extension or yeah. something like that, right? Like 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 <laughs> these, these these technologies and ways to do it and innovations are there now at a, at a level that just hasn't been there before. Well, and it's it's really kind of awe inspiring. I I had another guest a few weeks ago, one of my copywriter friends, the Dylan Marcy. If, I don't know if you know who he is. I know, him. and. He, uh, we were talking, we've, I've had him on a few times, great guy. And one of the things that we were talking about was kind of this evolution of technology and how, how it comes. Right. And we got on the topic of kind of how fantastic it is that 
it's two points. How fantastic it is that 10 years ago, 2008, 12 years ago, when the last recession hit, like 10 of the top 15 tech companies in the world right now were founded. Yeah. They, were, they were founded in apartments, garages, wow. living rooms. And just in that 10 year span, we've seen what's possible if you, if you have the drive and passion to help solve a problem for somebody. And that's directly corresponded to, I don't even know who, who wrote this. I read it in one of the airplane magazines flying back from, I think, Vegas last time. And it mentioned that something like 30 to 40% of millennials are now millionaires. And it's the highest that any generation has ever gotten. And it's corresponded to that tech. Like you mentioned click funnels. 20 years ago, it would have cost you tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to have somebody build out the infrastructure that you can do in your living room on a Tuesday now because of softwares like ClickFunnels. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, we, so um, it's interesting. Like we, we started um, promoting uh, Groove pages recently, but I've told people like we, we still use ClickFunnels a ton and, mm -hmm. um, and ClickFunnels is, um, it, it's a true like industry groundbreaking technology. You know, um, I was talking with one of my business partners yesterday about, um, so we're building this, this, um, this big e-com thing, me and my, my, my buddy Cody near. And, um, and so we were building this funnel and, um, and so we're, we're talking about like developers and all this stuff. And he makes this comment. He goes, he goes, Hey man, we're both like seven figure funnel builders. And he goes like, why don't we just do it? Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's true. Like when you, yeah. when you think about like, communicating what we want with someone else going through all the revisions i mean you're talking about still hours of work um and the, I, the the first thought there is well then i don't have to do it but the second thought is me and cody know how to do it and we've done yeah. it many times so we were just like it would probably take us less hours and be more along like you know because whenever you outsource something you're probably going to get like 80 percent of the quality you would have done if you know how to do it now if you don't know how to do it then you're going to get better but but mm -hmm. um it, this is like something we're really good at is copy headlines, you know, stories, offers, those kind of things. And so it's like, we were just like, why don't we just do it? Yeah. And we were both like, yeah, I don't know why we wouldn't just use ClickFunnels, just do it. Like it's, it's actually faster, mm -hmm. more precise. And it's me and him hands on doing it. And <clears throat> um, like, I, I try to encourage people who are not technology people um, like, you know, you either want to figure out if you want to learn software and click funnels or not. <laughs> and if you yeah. don't, then, then you need to have somebody in your, in your organization who does that or a contractor or somebody who helps you with that. But um, if you're decent with the computer, it's, it's not that hard. You know um, if, if somebody like in some people's just their, their generation um, like I'm the oldest possible millennial. I'm like 10 days into technically being a millennial. So I, I, I'm like grandpa millennial almost. Yeah. Um, uh, and so it's like, but, but I grew up, grew up, I, I, I identify with millennials because I grew up around the technology and, um, you know, a lot of these like generational classes is how people interact with technology, you know? So like millennials are used to computers, phones, um, mm -hmm. You know, these other gen was Z, Z now, I think it is like, I think so. These, these kids, I mean, they grow up like, you know, with like a shoe to their head. <laughs> like, I'm like, Hey, when I was a kid, the, the, the thing had a wire, <laughs> like you never, you know, like these kids grow up like, you know, um, you know, playing with like, this is an eraser. They play with the eraser, like it's a phone, like when they were a kid, you know? So, um, you know, cause there's stuff going on on the phone. Like when I was a kid, the only thing you did was dial, you know? Um, and so, um, but it, it's really like how you interact with technology. So like if somebody, they could be 30, 40, 50, whatever, but if, however they interact with technology, if they're not used to it, then they need to have somebody in the organization who's good at it because the, that technology is going to be one of the biggest levers in your, in your business. Like, and the biggest thing that I teach in like my, my, I don't know what you want to call it, success track record, whatever, basically mm -hmm. just working hard. <laughs> the biggest thing that, that I, I, I'm known for is, is the word leverage and teaching what I call the art of leverage, which is like, how do you take one hour and make it 
a hundred hours of productivity, you know, or take $1 and make it a hundred dollars, you know, and it's not magic. It's not, um, it's not, you know, hocus pocus crap, but, or get rich quick stuff at all. But it's like, um, technology is one of the biggest levers you can use, yeah. you know, is, 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 you know, so, um, so technology is like click funnels, like Dropbox, like zoom, like, you know, um, Stripe, like all, all these kind of things, um, make it unbelievably possible now for you to do things you couldn't do before. Um, and, um, you know, so it's like, you got to have somebody in your business who kind of owns the technology, um, or, or you have to learn it. Um, but if, and that's, if you're going to be a solopreneur and, um, but it's, it's amazing how, what's happening. Like it's, the most amazing stories, you know, in the past five years, <laughs> I've had the most mm-hmm. amazing solopreneur stories. I mean, I got, I got people selling ten thousand dollar packages as a soccer coach to soccer leagues. We got people uh, who are in Tai Chi who were selling Tai Chi lessons one on one for twenty ten twenty bucks a pop. Now they're selling them for a thousand dollars a month, yeah. um, and they've learned to sell them to executives and things like that. Um, you know, like, like this, this, this stuff is like, it's just amazing. Like what, what is happening with people who, um, who are willing to learn and, and build a real company, you know, like all all the get rich quick people, they either go away, but at the end of the day, whether they say it or not, they just get frustrated and go away. And, um, you know, you like, you can't read the headlines and and believe that it's that easy. Like I just made a post yesterday, that said, um, <clears throat> my podcast launch that did $88,000 and $111,000 in 64 days. Okay. Mm-hmm. That is a headline that we have to write in order to get somebody to read. Yeah. If it, it, like, like that is the game. Okay. Like there's so much going on. Like you have to be, you have to get their attention first. Now, like what well, I try let's... not to, what, what I try not to do in that article is say, you know, you don't have to work. You don't have to do anything. You don't need any experience. You don't need, oh, and by the way, this is not get rich quick. And it's like, I hate it when people say that. I'm like, dude, you literally just said this is get rich quick. And then you try to come back and say, oh, by the way, this is not get rich quick. I'm like, (laughs) it either is or it isn't. So, and and we all know just nobody makes money on get rich quick. No, not at all. But there is some validity to, it is that easy. You're right. You're right. So there's this flip side of it, right? (laughs) You don't want to say it's because- like there was this huge buildup of all this time and all these failures and all this whatever, but there is this like get rich quicker, like and, <laughs> you know, like like and it, it, when it comes in, like like everyone everyone trips out on entrepreneurism when they fail really hard mm-hmm. and they fall on their face really hard. Well, you can fall forward just as fast as you can fall backwards. Mm-hmm. If you can if you can take one step forward and three steps back. Why couldn't you take one step back and three steps forward? You know, and so hundred percent. And I think that like that goes into one of my favorite Marshall Silver quotes: "Fail forward fast." Right. And but there, the validity in the "it is that easy" is we were socioeconomically programmed through school that's designed to make factory workers, through the basic economy that's designed to keep an even playing field in an average mindset because that's what we were typically raised around or seen. But once you start actually doing it, you do realize, and for everybody listening, it is that easy. Just yeah. do the damn thing. Yeah. If you keep doing the damn thing, eventually something returns. Every action right. has an equal and opposite reaction. You're for, right. So, so think, think about anything like sports or anything that, that's easy for you to understand. Okay. Like you might, you might practice for years trying to become a college or professional athlete. But once you get there, it is remarkably easy. Like yeah. you, you know, this is where I'm supposed to be. Like I'm one of them. And, and it is remarkably easy to, to maintain a job somewhere in the league. Like when you're there, you're there. When you have the talent, you're there. And um, so now like, it's funny because like a couple of years ago, we started, I want to say like four or five years ago when we, you know, we really got behind click funnels and all these things. And it was just like, we were like, Hey, on any given day, we can start a launch right now, launch tomorrow and make five or $10,000 on any given day. Yeah. And we were just like, 
the speed of that is insane. Like, well, and talking about the speed, like we just one of our most recent clients, we launched at eleven twenty eight before Black Friday. Ran a promo for him. As of this morning, they're just shy of forty grand. That's awesome. <laughs> it's it's been like four and a half days, right? Yeah. And and you see all the time in click funnels or in Facebook groups or just in your timeline or on LinkedIn or Quora or Reddit, any of these places. And they're like, how come, how, how can I do this? I see it all the time. I can't figure it out. And it's, it's really like, it comes down to three things, right? There's three main components in any marketing or advertising campaign, technology, offer, audience. It's probably not the technology that's failing. Yeah. It's probably your offer, your audience. Yeah. And if you just spend a little bit of time thinking about, hey, how would I like to buy something, right? Mm -hmm. You pretty much can fix those two problems Yeah, pretty fast. Yeah, I, I found, um, you know, having coached almost 600 um, paid students in, in five years, it's like, it's like, the if I were to because I, I really look at like these the macro level data a lot and it's why I've had contracts with like Amazon, Facebook, AT and T, people like that is I'm pretty good at the macro level stuff. It's like when I look back at this program, I'm like a major issue for people has been traffic in their audience, mm -hmm. and it's like you can have a mediocre offer if you've got a red hot audience, man, mm -hmm. you can make a lot of money. You know, and I, I've seen people do that. I've seen people, I don't want to name any names because they're friends of mine, <laughs> but I've seen them start out. Their offer is subpar. Their, yeah. their copy is horrible. Their video follows no script at all. And they make like 50 grand. And I'm <laughs> like, wow, so-and-so got that traffic from so-and-so. So this is what I call leverage, right? It's like they're leveraging someone else's audience, someone else's show, someone else's podcast, someone else's event, whatever. And, but then they use that as a learning to make themselves better. And now years mm -hmm. later, they're phenomenal at it, you know? Um, and, and so what, what, another thing that I found just trying to understand, like, like how, how do people really get these audiences out of nowhere? So number one, if, if somebody is a good communicator, um, like, like there's a difference between like an entertainer and a trainer, you know, like, mm -hmm. but so it's like really like finding your audience there. But like, if somebody's a really good communicator, um, they generally can get an audience, you know, especially with social media nowadays. I mean, you know, um, a lot of like, I've seen great communicators on Facebook and we just help them put their stuff on YouTube, like mm -hmm. some, some place where long tail, it's going to just going to build and build and build and build and build. Um, versus you, Facebook, it's like gone, right? Like, like yeah, 37 yeah. seconds later, it's like, why can't you find the guy's post, you know? And um, so it, it's like, you know, so, so some, but yeah, I mean, like people who are good communicators, people who understand social science, they understand, um, you know, taking care of people, they understand being in a niche, um, like, and also like working in their passion, communicating within their passion. So like, um, you know, in the past, year we've we've niched down even harder because <clears throat> i'm in a i'm just in a situation where um i'm not about how much money can i make anymore it's about um i want to live at a certain level um which is which is a lot but but i mean i, mean, I, I have a high <laughs> standard but it's like but it's like uh i'm not trying to build another twenty thousand or fifty thousand dollar company unless it's a certain type of company that has a ton of leverage um and so for me, it's more about freedom and things like that. Spending time with my kids. I have four really young kids. So like, it's really easy for me to niche down into my passion, which right now has really been um, like a lot of things happening socially and things like this, mm -hmm. uh, politics and stuff like this. And so, um, so I, I, number one, no, no, whether it's that for you or whether it's a sport or outdoors or health or uh, entrepreneurism or whatever, but, but, but playing in a niche and having niche content, um, is, is the people who are, who just become great at going from nowhere to getting an audience and seeing six figure launches. They're, they're, they're just, they're good at finding these niches, you know, and they really get in those niches. They're self-confident in those niches. They're not afraid to be bold in those niches. And they're trying to, 
they're trying to, you know, I don't want to say trying to, but they're almost like uh, we're willing to offend people who don't, who aren't in that. Niche. Yeah. And that's totally fine. Right. Like, um, like if, like we have one guy, he's a hunter and fishermen hate him. <laughs> and, and it's like, they're both in the outdoors, but fishermen hate this guy. If you have a gun, you think this guy's cool. And, <laughs> you know, so it's like, um, you know, so, but I mean, um, but it, it, I, you know, what I love about um, Russell's book, um, I think I always have his book here, is um, Dot Com Secrets is, yeah. Um, oh yeah, shoot, I do have it right here, is um, uh, I, I love how he talks about like this, this principle that's been out for a long time, but he does a good job of like, really explaining it, is this principle like, you only need a thousand true fans. Yeah. And I hope people like let the, the weight of building this massive company fall off of you like you only need a thousand people and if you honestly take care of them serve them um care about them there's a difference between seeing them as a customer and a client one, th one thing i talk about is like you know client means you actually care about their well-being you care about their things like their security their safety maybe security online security of their money security of their family um a customer is a completely transactional relationships like you go to walmart you're a customer. You're in and out. Hey, man, do you know where this is? Nope. Okay, thanks, bro. <laughs> You're wearing the jersey. Awesome. Do you want me to show you where that is so you know next time? Not really. Okay, cool, man. Just appreciate you having a job. <laughs> Thank you. You know, um, you know, so it's fine. It's a customer, right? Like, I'm just a customer. It's complete transactional. But, like, you know, you go to a boutique store, man, they, um, hey, did, did you know um, how we got started? No. <laughs> they tell you their story yeah. they want to know your story right like like they want a connection and um and that is one of the easiest things to do guys this is free like you don't have to pay to tell your story or you know pay a, you know a whole bunch of money to learn how to connect with people right like this is all free stuff um, that you just have to implement out there and care, you know? And so it doesn't matter if you're a local business doing local retail, local services, or doing stuff online or e-com or whatever, um, these, these social principles apply. And it's, these are the people that I see for sure who come in and they can do really well is it, it almost doesn't matter if they're selling, you know, toothpaste or ink pens or shirts or, or courses when their audience is, is on to them, it doesn't matter what they sell. You yeah. Know? So talking about connection, I want to, I want to kind of explore that a little. We've talked passion. We've talked tools. We've talked connection. We've talked story. Are you willing to kind of go into your story a little bit? Like what, what's the passion that drove you? What, what got you from where you were, your, your, your parents' son to who we all know as Mr. Smiley now? <laughs> what, what was, what was, what was in the middle of that? Yeah. So um, without like, you know, making that a, like 10 minute story. Um, so when I was young, I, I, I was told by everybody, including a lot of times parents or whatever, which is, I'm not trying to bag on my parents at all, but um, I'm, I'm saying that for people who had parents who did, weren't that positive mm -hmm. um, is I, a lot of times I was told, um, that I wasn't that smart. I wasn't going to go anywhere. I was going to go to jail, all these kind of things. And guess what? That's kind of what happened. <laughs> I ended up not being that smart. I went to jail uh, at 16. Um, I was involved in a lot of drugs, uh, got involved in a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say true gangs, but like those kind of like cliques, you know, where it's yeah. like, we're out doing organized crime, you know, um, we're not just like hanging on a street corner. We're actually thinking of like something to go do this organized crime at 15, <laughs> 16 years old. Um, and so, um, like, um, but then there was this other side of me that like, I was, um, really, I was in advanced science and math classes. I was that, that stuff came super smart to me, super easy to me. And also, um, uh, I, I, I entered into this class in my high school called entrepreneurism, which I didn't know anything about, but somebody told me like, dude, you need to get in this class. This is totally you. And I got in this class and I loved it. And I thought, man, like I, I literally remember almost that entire year mm -hmm. to this very day, I'm 40 years old. And I literally remember being like 17 years old and in this class. And I remember the projects and the, you know, I created these like um, these 
ads for like, uh, so we had to create our own products. So I had this pro this cologne called smell me now. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, like all one, like the most popular in the school and all this stuff. And, um, we had these commercials and stuff and, um, and like, and then we had this like entrepreneurial project we had to do. And so I created an entire car show, um, in front of the school like so right in front of the school on this like entrepreneurial day where you're supposed to like demo your you know it's like hey here's my product it's a piece of wood that we sell and this is my business like that's what most people did well i had this massive massive thing i got <laughs> sponsors i i had i called everybody from sports coaches to people in the magazines locally and i said hey you've got a nice car come down show it at this event for entrepreneurs and blah blah, blah. i sold it hard there was like 20 or 30 hot rods and all these cars out front. The principal could not believe what was happening. They were like, James, <laughs> you pulled this off? Dude, I had, okay, this is how far as I went. I was not, didn't have any morals or anything like this. So I called all the strip clubs and said, hey, bring your girls down. <laughs> okay. to, so I to, had to strippers high <laughs> at high school. I had strippers. I had hot rods. I had music from like Phoenix, um, phoenix uh uh speakers and amplifiers they sent all this all this car amplifier stuff this huge like ten thousand or eight thousand dollar kit to us and um it anyway, sounds like it, a great time dude it was crazy i was 17 <laughs> years old and the principal was like i he, i mean he number one i was always in trouble with this guy this guy hated me but he walked up to me and i remember this like it was yesterday and he's like James, you need to do something with this. Like what you're doing here, this is you. Like this is how you contribute to the world. Not the drugs, not the gangs, not the <laughs> getting expelled. I got kicked out of schools, expelled out of districts, all kinds of stuff. And like, it, 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 but, but he was like, this is what you need to do. And so um, <clears throat> I still didn't know, didn't have mentorship, anything like that. But uh, all I knew was like, I, I started to realize that people live differently than we did. Um, and so, um, I started to realize like people lived in nice homes, people ate good food, uh, people, you know, um, drove nice cars. Like, uh, and I, like just to tell you like how poor I was, like, I remember driving down the road on I-5 in downtown Seattle, driving through in traffic and looking at the car next to me and realizing they have dash lights and we don't. <laughs> And I remember thinking, like, man, that car looks like a Our, spaceship. Like, look at all the dash lights. J just as a quick uh, kind of segue, are are you in Seattle? Uh, I'm in Dallas, but I was 20 years in Seattle, mm -hmm. uh, 12 I, I, years in LA. I was born in Seattle. What part? Uh, right, right up I-5, about 15 minutes in Mount Lake Terrace. Okay, okay. So I was like um, mostly South Seattle. I grew up in Beacon Hill, Rainier Valley. Nice. Um, played, played sports at Rainer Valley. In fact, I always show this. This is my sports card playing at Rainer Valley. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, it even says on the back. I think that? it says, uh, let me see if it'll focus. There we go. It, it says uh, Rainier. See the league like yeah. halfway down? That's Rainier. Um, That's awesome. Rainer Valley. So, um, you know, um, and then kind of was like, I, I got kicked out of some schools, ended up at Kentwood, um, played football at Kentwood, um, stuff like that. But and then, um, yeah. So anyway, like, <clears throat> um, so like, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. Like I, I wasn't like this, the worst kid in the school, but I was mm -hmm. definitely like someone that principals didn't want in the school. <laughs> they were yeah. like, this kid is not a good role model, he, you know, all this stuff. So, um, so anyway, um, you know, long story short, uh, everywhere I went, I just, I knew I had to make more money and I knew inherently I didn't have enough leverage. Now I didn't know the word leverage. I just knew I was pushing up a hill and I had that feeling all the time. And I think most people, especially in the lower middle class, they have that feeling and they just feel like whatever the hell I'm doing is so unproductive. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They're just like, they always have this thought of like, Oh, okay, so in order for me to have that, how many hours do I have to work? Let me see. Oh, damn, my whole life I'm going to work. Yeah. You know, like, and this is what they're selling me. Oh, yeah, cool. Just work 60 years, you know, with two two weeks a year off, and you're going to be good, man. That's your life, your whole life right there. Hopefully, you're, you're not sipping out of a straw by then, you know? And I remember thinking, like, this is insanity. Like, I'm, I'm going to be in my prime in my life, my 20s and 30s. Like, w why should I not be making money? and um being successful and doing whatever i want and so um 
so uh, I got a, I, I kind of like conned my way into jobs, man. I'd do anything I could, anything like, I, like I, I wouldn't say con, but I literally would go into interviews and, and like, uh, I remember, so my, my, my breakthrough job was I got a job at Nextel being a B2B sales rep at like 20 years old. And I was the only 20 year old. Everyone was like 30, 40, really like 40 and 50 on the team, mm-hmm. 88 salespeople. And I'm like this literal kid that comes in. And I'm so ghetto. I'm wearing a suit with a chain, like a gold chain <laughs> on the outside. I, I still have pictures of this. And I have like this rubber band watch that I had bought in um, Venice Beach, California when I was a kid. I was so like, I didn't have like a nice metal watch. I had like a rubber band watch. And, um, uh, but all I knew is I need to get in here and hustle. I mean, hu- I can out hustle all these guys. And I just went in there and told the manager, I said, look, man, you see all those guys out there? There's no way they have more energy, more passion than I do. No way. And I said, I can outsell and out hustle all those guys. And I may not know how to talk to executives, but I can tell you this. I believe that an executive would rather work with somebody who is passionate and there to help them and will just do something like always answer the phone and always be there for them than somebody who has 20 years of experience who knows everything about the technology, but they can't get a hold of them. And yeah. he just looked at me like, dude, you're, you're right. He's like, how do you know that? I'm like, I don't know. But I, I just know <laughs> that that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, am I lying? And he goes, no, you're not. And in the back of my head, I was like, damn, that worked. I can't believe that. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't believe, like, I was just using my own logic and it was true, you know? And so um, <clears throat> uh, I, I, I became one of the top sales reps. I was selling and doing stuff I wasn't even supposed to do. I was selling into accounts I wasn't supposed to sell into. I was getting in trouble. Like, I'm kind of like a rebel kind of a guy, you know? So it's like, I was selling into accounts I wasn't commissioned on, but I still crushed it. And so um, I got the attention of, uh, um, so this is around 2001 or so. And then I got the attention of uh, software companies that were building software onto mobile devices, which is what I was selling, was Blackberries and things like this. Mm -hmm. This is like the generation one smartphone before iPhone and this stuff. And so um, they were like, hey, we're building technology on this and you know about it. You're leading in sales. You're this passionate guy we see in here all the time. Um, Do you want to come run sales for our company? And so like, I have no clue what I'm getting into. I don't know what Silicon Valley is. I don't Mm -hmm. know. Like, this is not a joke. I actually thought it was called Silicon Valley. I thought it was (laughs) a joke. I literally, I'm not kidding. I literally thought it was a joke. Like I've heard people say, well, that's derogatory. I'm like, no, I literally thought it was called Silicon Valley. <laughs> that, that, that's what I thought. I didn't know. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know about the dot com boom. I didn't know anything. And here I am, like right smack dab in the middle of a booming industry. And I, I just, you know, like, I, I think one thing that I tell people is like, I had to get off drugs. I had to stop drinking. That was my pers- personal thing. I, I was just way too hard of a drinker, and. I had to be in my right mind so that when opportunities came about, I was smart enough to opt to capitalize and I yeah. was aware and I had the energy to capitalize on them. And um, so that's my personal thing, whether somebody is that's for them or not, but, but I can tell you it works. Like you want to be in your right mind in key situations in your life, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I, I ended up getting this job for as the fifth or, or the sixth employee of this company called Telenav. We were telephone navigation. We were the we're version one of Google Maps. I had yeah. no idea what I'm walking into. You know, we have almost no and revenue. Telenav we, was huge. Dude, it was it was like we have two of our original Series A funders, VCs, mm-hmm. were in Google round one. I mean, we had the biggest, we have Menlo Ventures, like we had big time, big time companies behind us. And um, the only reason we tanked our IPO was because Google literally jacked all of our stuff and said, oh yeah, they just said, hey, here's how you sue us. Go ahead and sue us. Good luck. A hundred thousand, hundred million dollars later, you might get something out of us, you know? And so, um, but we, you know, like through all that time, I hustled, I trained over 12,000 affiliates across the country. Um, so uh, I, I basically learned this whole thing about the, about affiliates and indirect mm-hmm. channels and things like this. And I said, okay, like indirect sales. So I was like, so if, if Verizon, AT&T and Sprint and all these guys won't just bring us in, why don't I just go to their indirect channel and I'll offer an affiliate program to all these guys. 
And so I would get in with all these like little cell phone shops. And then I realized like, oh, there's master dealers over all these guys. So then I would go them and I would essentially like pay them off. I'd be like, hey man, I'll I'll give you 20 grand and sponsor your event. So it's not like paying them off, but kind of yeah. Like, hey, mouse, sponsor your event. Um, I- I'll buy drinks for everybody. You, you but- just lobbied the hell out of some cell phone companies. Yeah. I mean, we just <laughs> went in there and just hustled, man. And yeah. We out hustled everybody. And um, and so that, uh, that you know, we had gone from z- pretty much zero to $350 million. We were a billion dollar valuation. Um, we had an IPO that, that was. Um, you know, at least in the location-based services like GPS space, it was yeah. one of the biggest ever. Uh, our competitors were like Garmin and, and you know, Tom Tom and all the, we crushed all those guys, MapQuest, we crushed everybody. Everybody who's in location, they, we, we stole all their customers, you know? Yeah. Um, and then we were so big, Google came in to try to buy us like twice. Uh, we actually were not that far from Google in Silicon Valley. We we're like a couple blocks away. And so they came in, tried to buy us a couple of times. They wanted to buy us at a 10th of our valuation. And we were like, dude, get, get out of here. Well, we should have sold because we would have made more money. Then. I, I was going to say, if I, <laughs> if I remember correctly, Telenav kind of got, kind of got the shaft on that one. So selling yeah, was totally. probably the smart move. <laughs> totally. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it's like, it's funny. It's like, so in the beginning of this conversation, I said, your problems are magnified. Like, well, this is like yeah. a billion dollar problem that we screwed up on. So um, like I had a house picked out in Malibu and then all of a sudden <laughs> I was like, oh damn, um, you know, I live in South Cal. Uh, Looks like I'm going to Sacramento, not Malibu. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Right. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, <laughs> houses in Arizona are pretty good. <laughs> so, um it's funny. I ended up buying homes in Oregon <laughs> instead of nice. Malibu. So, um, but anyway, so um, yeah, I mean, so, you know, so, but, but see, even through that failure, it was like, I learned that like, to me, it was a failure. Like we, I, we had worked all this time and uh, when the IPO happened, I had actually already left the company. I, I thought the thing was tanking before that. Yeah. And so I had left the company a couple of years before, but was still like a shareholder and all this stuff. So, um, I was involved in the IPO, but it was like, it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't this big hurrah. In fact, the CEOs still work there. So that tells you mm-hmm. nobody made, you know, 50 million bucks or something crazy, like, cause they still work there. Yeah. And so, um, but here's the thing is the leverage that happened through that has set me up for the rest of my life. Like there is no place I can, like I can get a job anywhere at any tech company, um, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of CEOs that know me now, you know, these guys have anywhere from 10 to a billion dollar companies. And so it's like, if I want to work pretty much anywhere, um, I can be like, Hey, remember me? And the, and I can get in the door and people trust me. Yeah. Um, and that's what allowed me to get into consulting a lot. It was, you know, <clears throat> right around 2005, 2006, I started the side business consulting, and, um, and then it just, it just boomed from there. Like I started realizing there was a gap in knowledge between like in any industry, especially around technology, social media, digital marketing, it was like the knowledge was going up. Like every day you were losing track of what was going on, what was happening, mm-hmm. how you could use these platforms. So like the knowledge available was going up, but people's knowledge was staying flat. And I, and I basically said, Hey, I will pay, you will pay me and I'll close that gap for you in a day. Yeah. You know, and that's what that, that was my whole pitch it was like, Hey, I'll, I'll just, I'll bring you up to speed, but you got to pay me <laughs> mm-hmm. and then you can make money off this forever. Um, and that's what they would do. And it was, it was crazy. You know, I actually got a lot of people don't, don't, I mean, like I had, I, I served over, it was like a six year period. I was contracting with this company called Tribecta, Tribecta Insights. I think the company's mm-hmm. still around. They're in New York city in the Tribecta district. And what they would do was they, they were stock investors. And what they would do is they would get companies that were interested in, in technology stocks. Well, they needed a consultant to be able to tell these companies what's going on in this market. Who are the players? Who are the, who's yeah. the competition? Um, what, what, you know, where do you think this is going to go? So I became this expert in anything around mobile apps, social media, tech, all this kind of different technology. And so I was doing like, it was nothing but, like to get like three to five clients a day, people, I had no idea who these people are. I'm on the phone with CEO after CEO after CEO and, and getting paid between three and $500 an hour to talk to these people. 
So yeah. it was it was insane. Like I'd sit there at the other day. I'm like, damn, I just made three thousand dollars today just talking on the phone. Yeah. You know, I was talking from my cell phone. This was there was no Zoom or nothing like that. And yeah. so, um, you know, so the, I was doing that on the side of my job. <laughs> you know, and um, as long as it wasn't a competitor for who I was working for, it was fine. You know, and so, um, so yeah, I mean, like it. it um, uh, you know, I was like an insider. You know, and so people would pay to get that kind of information. And by the way, that is still to this day what we do and that opportunity is out there more than ever before i tell people like yeah. opportunity consulting is crazy <laughs> you know especially all the people who have read russell's book one of the biggest i know, just plug for russell i mean like one of the biggest things you could do is take what's in that book and find niches that have no idea about it and there's there's like literally probably a thousand niches that have no idea about that book or anything in that book you know and you could go in there, work with the top tech companies or the top companies in that industry and help them understand what that's about, you know? Oh, hundred, hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that like we, we here at Funnel Driven, we specialize in intent and affinity backed AI powered omnipresent ecosystems, lead generation, client acquisition, sales, right? Th those are our priorities. And we've created our own methodology, Thrive Selling, Five C's of Scale, Four Pillars of Growth. We've, we've got all of Very these- cool developments, tools, expertise that we've gone through. But it's one of those things that like, even it's what we get paid for, right? Mm -hmm. The coaching, consulting and development yeah. as well as, as well as asset management. But I'm the first one to tell somebody when they're on the phone, like, yeah, you could do this yourself. Like you're, you're not paying me to do something you can't do. You're paying me to just do it faster. Sure. Uh, it's, it's speed to access mm -hmm. is, is really what it is. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you guys have specialized in for so long is just speed of knowledge yep. rather than that CEO having to go out and pick up 50 books and spend a couple months, just face down into text. You can come in and in one day, boom, they're caught up and now they can leverage. Yeah. We, we just had a, um, we run our, our agency is a lot smaller. Now we try to stay within like three to five clients, but, um, mm -hmm. and we mostly focus on co consulting and coaching, but like, um, but, uh, it's interesting how, you know, so we just got this like couple hundred thousand dollar deal recently. I did a big case study about it and stuff like that. And, you know, like th this deal will probably be worth three or $400,000 by the end of the first year, because we come in with, um, you know, ads, you mm -hmm. know, just normal Google, Facebook, you know, that kind of stuff. And then it, it develops into funnels, then it develops okay. into websites, then it develops into, you know, paid uh, TV stuff, over the top yeah. TV stuff, billboard stuff, whatever. And, and by the way, guys, if you don't know any of this stuff, you can contract all this stuff. Like you can find people who are the experts mm -hmm. um, who run, you know, good agencies. And, um, and basically uh, this is how you get a lot of leverage is, you know, you can get paid well for connecting people who need that service and people who provide that service, you know? Oh yeah. Um, and that that's one of the most easiest ways to make money nowadays is people it's 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 funny how like how many people come into some of our programs and they're like they're stuck for months pulling their hair out on funnels and copy and email sequences and i'm like wait a minute you know that person and you know that person why don't you just hook them up and you'll make three thousand dollars a month without even doing anything <laughs> just yeah. as, a, as a residual off them doing business together you know what i mean um and so, you know, it's like, this is so like, this is true, like biz dev, business development is like, yeah. you know, helping people connect. Um, and, uh, and there's, it's, it's just, it's what I call like a, it's a high leverage move. It's, it's, yeah. it's a couple hours of your work. It's super high value. These two companies are ecstatic that you connected them mm -hmm. and they will pay you for that. Um, and you never built a funnel or did anything. <laughs> You know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, just last night we were running the end of our Cyber Monday promo, and we we did something we haven't done ever. We did sixty percent off all developments. It was our biggest offer we've ever done, and we had two people right at the end that were kind of just on the edge that were like, "Do I want to? Do I not want to?" <clears throat> we closed them both, but they were all from an affiliate. An affiliate sent them over. He made like two grand at like eleven p.m. last night. Yeah. He didn't do shit. All yeah. he did was connect yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and that, um, that's where I think that's a missing thing. I think that people need mm -hmm. to need to start looking into more is, um, like if there's a gap in entrepreneurism, 
that that it's not really like Russell's background. I hate to say the gap in Russell stuff because he's the, he's one of the smartest people I've ever talked to. You know, um, literally, he's one of the smartest people. Um, but the, it's that whole like you know business development side, business yeah. growth, and um, and and yeah, I mean that. It's, I mean, there's more money made there mm-hmm. than than online. I mean, th- like there are billions and billions of dollars made in that in that industry of just connecting people. You know. Oh, 100%. So, yeah. So talk, so talking about connecting people. We've got to wrap up here, but before I have you leave everybody with how to contact you, how to find you, uh, how to reach out to you if they want to know more about you, if they need to hire you, what would you say? I want I want a favor from you if that's okay. Sure. What would you say are like the three gold nuggets? for people listening that they could do implement or use as leverage today to help them get to that next level or get over whatever they're plateaued at. The biggest thing I would say is number one, um, uh, the first thing you need to do is write down what's your, what's your, what's milestone number one financially for you, not your grand slam home run. You're going to the beach, but what's stage one. Um, for some people it's, I need to, um, supplement this type of income for my job. For some people it's $2,000 a month. For some people it's a hundred thousand dollars a month. Um, but, but, you know, come up with something realistic. Like if, if you can't make $5,000 a month, you ain't making a hundred thousand dollars a month. <laughs> you gotta cross first before you get the second. Right. So it's like, yeah. you know, so what's milestone number one, that that's the first thing. Number two, um, we have this thing called the opportunities matrix where we, you, you need to look at all the opportunities that you have, write them on a whiteboard, write them on a piece of paper, on a spreadsheet, whatever, and look at which one gives me the most leverage. Okay. It may or may not be something you want to do, but which one gives you the most leverage and is the path of least resistance to make money quickly. Um, because what I've learned in entrepreneurism, especially in solopreneurism, it's like um, if you can make a thousand dollars, it will give you the momentum and the positive energy and the ad spend and the, the team to make $10,000, yeah. you know, but if you're always trying to swing for the fence, you never learn how to, how to, you know, just hit the ball, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so it's like, you got to hit the ball. I don't care if it's a fly out. I don't care if it goes out of bounds, but you got to hit the ball first, you know? Yeah. And, and typically people don't just start crushing grand slam home runs <laughs> before they even know how to hit the ball. And so, um, I think, um, you know, like looking at your opportunities and objectively saying, okay, this one and this one are, are the best, the, the mm-hmm. highest leverage moves that I can make right now. And then, um, and, and I would say, and then, you know, really go down deep into that um, in terms of like, number one, how do I do? Typically people don't have a lot of money for ad spend, things like that. So I would say um, one of the first things would be, um, figure out how to do some type of organic launch, whether it's to your social audience, number two, to your email list, if you have one or don't. And number three, don't let that be an excuse. If you don't have either one of those, find a partner, find somebody, find someone with the Instagram page, find somebody with the Facebook group, find somebody. <laughs> yeah. Somebody has that audience. This is why I talk about leverage. People are like, oh my God, I have to build an audience to 2000 people. No, you don't. There's somebody who has that audience already. Go talk to them. Mm-hmm. If they won't work, if they won't work with you, go talk to somebody else. They're not, there's not only one person, go find somebody else, you know? Um, and if they won't work with you, find a way to serve them better. <laughs> you know, yeah. you might have to, you might have to have a funnel where you give them a hundred percent of the first offer and you only make money on upsells, but Hey, you built a list, you made some sales and, and, you know, you're starting to get to, to, to point a, right. Um, and then the idea here now, if you're going to be a real entrepreneur, don't spend all your money right away. Okay. <laughs> like you can make a post and be happy and Hey, I made 5,000 or whatever, 10,000 or whatever. But it's like, don't go and spend all that money because that is the money you need to run your business. So there's two things you want to spend money on right away. It's going to be ads. So marketing and people or resources. Like you need, you need to at least offload a little bit to somebody uh, whether it's a VA or you need some mini me or somebody who does something significant that you don't want to do, you probably need somebody in your company. That's one thing. Number two, um, you're probably going to need to invest in the marketing. And I would think ads would be a good thing. So it's like make money organically. If you have to rev share with somebody on a, on a JV, just do it. 
make some money, then take that money. I, I mean, seriously, like if you can take a hundred percent of that money and run it back into ads, you know, yeah. that would be your best option. Um, now, um, the other thing that I will just add on top of that is one of the best ways to make money. I have a whole system on this so I can give people kind of the crux of how it works is make a list of people that you know who are some type of VIP type of person, whether it's an executive, an influencer, whatever, everybody you know, and, and if I have people go, well, I don't know anybody. I'm like, dude, pull up your social media. Okay, you only have 600 people. I guarantee you in that 600 people, you have at least 20 people who are some executive yeah. owner, whatever. You write all those people down, okay? Then look on that sheet and see, does any of these people, could they work with each other? You know, so this is one of the first like serious six figure businesses that I started was I was like, I'm going to be in. So someone told me about being in the connection business and, and yeah. making, making like 5% off each person or 2% off each person in the deal. And so um, this has paid me six figures a year residually without ever, ever, ever talking to these people almost ever again for like over a decade, like you can make <laughs> a stupid amount of money doing this. And now you, the, your job becomes following up every month saying, Hey, did you exchange any money with this person? Okay. Send me my 3% or whatever your deal is. Right. Um, and so your job becomes collecting, but that's easier than building a funnel, building a VSL, yeah. paying for ads. You know what I mean? So, um, and uh, so you would be surprised how many times you can do that where you can connect two people, make a significant amount of money and, um, and yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's off to the races after that. So, you know, those are, I always tell people, even if you have a good business, this is a, a, a good side business. This is easy money that you may have to make a couple text messages to introduce people, a couple, a couple phone calls. And even if it paid you $5,000 a year, that's $5,000 $5, a, a year for making a couple phone calls, you know? So, yeah. you know, so that's some, some gold that I can, give you guys if you guys go out there and implement that that's that's easy easy money i appreciate it i know everybody listening somebody's going to take action if you don't you should take action now for those of you who want a little bit more maybe they want the the matrix maybe they want to talk to you maybe they just need to hire you maybe it's all of them where can they find you um so people can either pm me on facebook we have a team that like scans through our, our pms every day um i try to read as many as i can to be honest with you um and then so that's one way is just connect with me on facebook number two um jamesmiley.org there's a lot of, there's free stuff on there there's a lot of stuff that there's ways to connect with me on there as well so you can um you know schedule calls and things like that so but yeah um if, there, if i can help anybody um for sure let me know awesome i appreciate it i know everybody listening does we're definitely gonna have to do this again uh, so let's let's talk about that. I want to thank you again for being on the show and everybody listening. This was another episode of the Inbound Secret. Thanks, Bryce. Appreciate you guys. This is the Inbound Secret. My name is Bryce, and I'm your host for The Inbound Secret, where we're talking with top performers and health experts and sales badasses alike about their strategies to optimize their well-being and performance. Once again, this is The Inbound Secret, and, and let's get rocking and rolling. This is The Inbound. This is, this is, this is The Inbound. This is The Inbound. This is The Inbound.